Yamamoto Nutrition, proud sponsor of RX Muscle. Visit YamamotoNutrition.com. Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Yamamoto Nutrition. Visit YamamotoNutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and tonight's guest is the 2017 California Pro Bodybuilding Champion. His first pro win, going to the Olympia, Gerald Williams, our good friend. Welcome, man. Hey, what's up, Dave? How are you doing? How's everybody doing? Uh, it's happened. First you're on top win. of the world, yeah. man. Congratulations. You know, it doesn't quite... It doesn't quite feel like being on top of the world. It actually feels like being back to work. So, you know, put that one down and focus on what's in front of me right now. <laughs> Took you two years to win the T Nationals overall in 2005. Uh, yeah. You, you took off almost seven years after uh, that 2008 season, came back and won your pro card at the North American Championships. And uh, yep. now you're a, a pro champion. I don't think anyone ever has predicted you to win anything, and you keep surprising <laughs> and shocking people. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's crazy. I was like, every time, like, this guy comes out of nowhere, and it's like, there's only so many times you can come out of nowhere before people just say, like, you know what, he might be actually okay. Um, but, you know, I, I think that's how it goes. I think, you know, it's really about, you know, taking the time off. You know, folks have somebody else in their mind that they're looking to bring or, or pick as the winner. Um, and folks associate, you know, with who they know. So if they, if I'm not out in the media and I'm not doing all the other things, then yeah, it's, it does seem like I'm coming out of obscurity. But it's not always the case. Look, you, you brought tremendous conditioning into this show this past weekend, and I always say, a million times I've said this, conditioning win shows. You have one of the best structures, yeah. I think, in the IFBB right now, uh, with the tiny waist, the big V taper. You're not the biggest guy on stage, but you out, I guess you could say, classed people on stage in terms of quality of what you brought. Um, how long did you, you prepare for this uh, competition? How many weeks? Because I know you have um, a really busy schedule. Yeah, so interestingly, I um, I really had, had mapped out a plan to do this show after the Sheru last year. Like, remember I got fifth at the Dubai show. Ronnie Winkler won, won that, and I had, we had talked after that, and I was like, you know, I'm going to do the Cal Pro. Um, and so I really mapped out a game plan to, to pretty much – I took some time in December off and then pretty much trained the whole way through. I didn't really ramp up um, until about February. But believe it or not, I only did 20 minutes of cardio at most to get ready for the show. <laughs> Good to have good genetics. So, I I don't even know if it's that because there have been times I've done a lot of cardio to get ready for shows. I think it was really the fact that um, I was I'd eaten clean. Really, I'd eaten clean for a whole year. The 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 challenge for last year was that I had taken an entire year. You know, I took it like four months and didn't train and ate chicken chow mein from Berkeley Bowl. And you know, um, I'm not Kevin Lebroni, so I can't just come back in like four months and do a pro show and be like, ah, oh, I'm amazing. Yeah. Um, so it really took me all the way until November to, to from. April to November to look like, you know, a bodybuilder again to get my body, to build my body back up. And then, you know, I didn't have to, you know, start from a deficit. I was actually able to make progress. Um, you know, definitely, you know, I'm, I'm super aware of the, the body parts that are strong and they're not strong for me. And I feel like I was able to make improvements on the bo in the body parts that weren't that strong to help balance them out with the ones that are. Um, and it was able to stay lean enough where I wasn't able, I didn't have to kill myself to get in shape. I think there was like, five days of real suffering um, towards the end, for the most part, um, you know, we saved it because we weren't really sure what type of season this was going to be for me. Um, so there's a lot left in the tank, which I can really appreciate. And Matt Berzicott, um, who does my food, um, is my coach, he, he, I contribute that to him. He's learned my body really, really well. You, uh, you, your body has definitely matured over the last years, few years that we've seen you competing, and obviously you've put on size. Now you're at a point where everyone knows who you are. You're qualified for the Olympia. You'll be competing in two weeks at the Muscle Mayhem, Chad uh, Nichols' first uh, pro men's bodybuilding open show. You know, now people are talking about you as, you know, one of the favorites. Does that put more pressure on your plate? Initially, it hit me as like, oh, wow, qualified for the Olympia, won a pro show. Um, awesome. And I think, you know, now that... I, I still have that feeling of like, I, there's a lot to prove. I think there are a lot of people that don't think that I, you know, belong winning a show or that I may not have been worthy of winning a pro show or I don't, I'm not big enough for all those other things. Um, and you know what I, what I, what I say to that is bodybuilding is about, you know, structure, shape, conditioning, and presentation. 
Um, and I promise most of these folks that they're not working like I'm working in so many other facets and dimensions and the same work ethic that I bring to the other areas of my life I bring to this, um, which I think has allowed me to be successful without being the biggest guy. You know, I mean, imagine, you know, numerical callouts, Hakeem and I have the same last name. So numerical callouts, I'm right next to him. I was like, well, we're just going to put size versus shape together. And we're just going to see how this works out straight from jump. <laughs> um, and that's that's what ends up happening. So I think there are a lot of people that, you know, believe the biggest guy is the one that's going to win the show. And like I said, I, I like you believe the conditioning, shape, structure, presentation are, are the real things about professional bodybuilding. And, and the difference between first and second is really about presentation and how you're able to present yourself and how you're able to, to, to display your physique um, in the best way. And I, like I said, I, I pride myself at this point on on learning the art and having had the ability to learn from guys like you, Tony, Chris, um, about how to be a, a good pro in that sense and being able to apply those lessons. Gerald, um, what do you think you changed most from the Ferrigno legacy and those shows you hit at the end of last year to this show here in May? Um, what, uh, what changes to your physique do you think were the most apparent? Um, you know, I think um, I, I really focused on my, my biceps got better. We all know, you know, it's no secret my arms are not the greatest. Um, I think they made progress. Um, I think my front delts made a lot of progress. I think I was able to um, bring out a little more outer sweep. I think I need a little more inner sweep going on. Um, you know, I was really mindful of my glute ham tie-in. I, I know I have good glutes and I know I have a good back. And so making sure that I kind of kept those things in balance together. Um, and, and really the biggest thing that, that I changed was training twice a day. Last time I did that when I was, it was when I was 19, when I won the Teenage Nationals. Um, and so, you know, 10, 12 years later, I'm going back to saying, you know what, let's train every, let's train everything twice a week. Let's train twice a day. Um, which actually probably is what allowed me to, to minimize the amount of cardio because of the intensity of the training, um, throughout the amount of time, six days a week. Yeah. Now, how do you do that with your schedule? You work like 40 jobs. You, you don't have a minute to spare. <laughs> I don't know how you wind up getting to the gym that much and getting that much accomplished there because I would be mentally burnt out you know, if I had to do each body part twice a week like that. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I have a different segment, you know, like a, I have a volume, the front side of the week. I train everything in three days. Um, and so, you know, I have a volume segment and I have a heavy segment. I think that's allowed me to create um, a little bit of neurological balance for me. Um, and, and create some ways that my body's been pretty able to do the same things. Um, you know, not really worrying about mixing up exercises, pick the ones that work well, do those and, and worry about increasing weight, paying attention to how I feel. Um, efficiency, um, not a lot of break times in between the sets and things like that. Uh, you know, I do my cardio after my second workout at night when I have more time. Um, but typically my schedule is, you know, I'll get up, train like a uh, normal, um, I'll go to work, uh, I'll go to second work and I'll teach the classes and then, you know, I'll come back, maybe have a little bit of time to, to sit down for a second, then head over to San Francisco and train over at Worlds. And then um, sometimes depending on when, because they close at midnight, so I'll have to roll around the corner to 24 to do my cardio. Um, and then I'll shoot back home, do a little bit of work on, on the real estate stuff and then pass out. Um, so, yeah, man, it's really just it's a day after day after day after day. And the days I can grab naps, I grab naps. And my Sundays, I usually just try and. Uh, just lay down the whole day I try and get all my cooking and everything done on Saturdays, all my errands done on Saturdays. Um, the time I would be at works, I'm not at works, um, and the other stuff. I think the challenge was when I had some listings on the market, Sundays were open house days. And so I was, you know, working on Sundays, but you know, I've closed all those deals. So it's really, you know, I have a little bit more time now. What did you actually weigh up there on stage this past weekend? I have no idea. Um, I was 236. Before we, I think it was Sunday, I actually started gaining weight. I was gaining like two or three pounds a week towards the end. It was really crazy. So I would imagine like 237 is where I ended up. Um, I, you know, I, I started seeing Jimmy Bluff, um, who, you know, a lot of guys, I guess, you know, go see and check him out. And really a game changer. I mean, in the sense of, you know, Patrick Horn is the guy I see here as my normal body worker. I go get body work done every Saturday morning um, religiously. Um, and I've, I've been going to LA to shoot the, this video series uh, for Muscle Insider. And so I was down there and I had, I had text Brandon Ray, who's one of my buddies. And I was like, look, you know, I need to see somebody that's down here in LA so I can keep up my schedule. He was like, you should go see Jimmy Bluff. And I was like, all right, you know, I'll give this guy a chance. Um, saw him for an hour and it was like probably one of the most excruciating experiences of my life. 
Mm -hmm. um, but also in the sense created more space, like in the sense of one of the biggest things, I think there was so much tension, um, the fascia tension was precluding me from really being able to expand. Like I have one of those bodies, like it, it, like it moves and grows and breathes as I pose and do things. Um, and it, it, it's allowed to, to be able to do that because, um, I think I've been opened up a little bit more and that's just typically how my body's been, but it's gotten better because there's not as much tension over the muscle. And so I think that was another big thing that, that really allowed the change in shape. I mean, the last really three or four weeks I was gaining weight with less food, um, and a minimal amount of cardio, I think just because my body had space to grow. Right. Right. Makes sense. Uh, you know, Jimmy's uh, got does some good work. Uh, I've had him work on me for hours and hours and hours at a time. So I can I can relate. Yeah, to I, I do at a time, four hours at a time, man. Yeah. I'm like, let's just power through this. It's it's ridiculous. I don't know how. I, I, you know, people say, how do you sit there for four hours? I don't know how he does it for four hours. That that's the, the right. thing that, that, that <laughs> miss me. But you know, he loves it though. I mean, I think he he you know he's got a lot of really you know high-end clients from all over the world. Um, but I think he has a real passion for what what cultivation, it, like bodybuilding is a, is a cultivating art, you're sculpting. And I think he sees himself as an artist in that sense of being able to to shape the lines and open things up. Um, it's really wild, man. I, like I said, I've never experienced anything quite like it. He's got a really unique technique and I, I, I like it and it works. So, um, you know, like I said, we I saw him actually the day after the show um, and, you know, just spent three hours on the table and, you know, opened everything up. So like I said, it's, it's, it's a process. Hmm. You got the uh, muscle mayhem coming up. I, everyone thinks that the, you know, everyone's like, Oh, I'm going to do Kansas city because they think it sounds like a small time show. <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be a better lineup <laughs> than we've seen all year. Uh, how do you think you'll do going into that? You know, I try not to focus on how I'm going to do my, my focus is really always, and it's, it's always been this, um, is to be the best version of myself. I always feel like if I can bring my best and that's all I can really ask for, that's all I can control. Mm. Um, I think sometimes it does get a little nerve wracking, like all oh, the big names and all the hype and all the folks are doing the show and you see everybody at the athletes meeting, and everybody's like, oh, I'm cool. I'm great. I'm going to win this. And it's like, you know what? At the end of the day, you know, the show is tomorrow. Let's, let's get on stage and let's go to work. Um, and so it's, it's really for me, I, I like to try and put all the other noise to the side and like who's going to win, who's doing the show, who's doing this other stuff. And really just focus on myself because that's the only variable I have any control over. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Going into uh, September's Olympia, um, a lot of guys, yeah. especially the first time around, they skip the Olympia. Will you be at the Olympia or will you skip it? I will be at the Olympia. Okay. I will, you know, th th this is one of my, like, goals to make it to the Olympia. I think that was my actual bodybuilding goal <laughs> was just to do the Olympia. Like, that was literally, at first my bodybuilding goal was just like, okay, you know what? I want to turn pro. And it, it was like a bigger goal because I guess I had set on it for so long than it really was in reality. And so afterwards, I was like, what's next? This is such a letdown. Um, and I was like, well, you know, I needed, to, I needed to do a show. And I didn't really feel like I had competed as a professional until the third one. I was like, oh, now I feel like I know kind of what it takes to compete um, and get out and travel internationally and things like that and compete. Um, and I feel like, you know, once again, like the the, the, it was somewhat anticlimactic as well. So I think now there's this, I think the, the chase itself for some other pr progression um, in the sport is ultimately, I think, w what the goal is. And so, you know, succeeding and su securing, you know, an Olympia berth is like, wow, this is great. No way I'll pass that up. I'm not, I'm not delusional. I don't think I'm going to go beat Phil Heath um, or Cedric or Dexter. It's funny. I saw Dexter at the show. He's like, oh, you're going to be up here with me. I was like, you know, we're, we're in a different league, Dexter. I get it. You know, and I love Dex, you know, um, one of his friends is actually, was actually my very first coach when I was a kid. So I've known Dex for a minute. And so, um, you know, he's messing with me. But yeah, I mean, I, I definitely want to go and take in the experience because, you know, that's that's what every every bodybuilder that's gotten on stage. That's what they want. And if for nothing, and it, the overwhelming community, like the people that I know here in the Bay Area, um, you know, there haven't been any pro bodybuilders from the Bay Area that have, that have been the Olympia. And a lot of guys that have, that have competed and never turned pro. And so I feel like ultimately what, what this is, feels like, at least it's felt like for the last couple of days, um, is everybody's opportunity to, have, to somewhat vicariously like live that dream and my own as well. And so um, definitely won't pass on that opportunity just for nothing else the experience. Well, Gerald, uh, congratulations on the big win. As you know, we've known each other for you know, many, many years and I've watched you grow up and uh, 
You made it, buddy. You're, uh, you're heading to the Olympia, and uh, we'll be seeing you in two weeks at that Muscle Mayhem, and uh, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll head into the Olympia with two big wins under your belt. Yeah, it's going to be a good show. It's going to be a fight. I'm excited about bringing – I think I'll be much better at that show than I was at this one. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited about that. All right, and that will take us to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Yamamoto Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo, and we'll see you next time.